Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Grit Give Recognize Implement Time podcast. I'm your host, Steve Nathanson, CEO and founder of Strive for More. And I want to follow up the last conversation we just had on how do I help others be as motivated as I am with a very similar topic. It's a question we get, which is, other people are lazy. How do we deal with that? We can have that perception of people who just don't want to put the effort in. They don't care. Very similar to the last episode, I always do like to start as what gives us that impression. Because oftentimes, there's a lot more that goes into that expression of someone who's lazy. That's just a general characterization of it. So what actually leads it into that for us? What gives us that impression that they are lazy? These are good things to know because when we start talking about how to actually deal with it, it starts breaking that apart to understand more fruitfully what does them being lazy actually mean? What feeds into it? What are the specific, say, actions, mindsets, statements, perhaps, that they make that feed into this for us to actually start addressing and then be able to successfully address? Very similar to last time as well, when we talk about motivation, each and every single one of us has a different level of motivation, just as a different level of productivity, output, I'd say time management, effectiveness, efficiency. So without sounding like a broken record from the last episode, all of that I think is applicable as well here. How do our own perceptions, how does our own production, our own standards, our own level of efficiency play a role into this? Because again, when we talk about other people being lazy, there often is that natural comparison that happens of here's what I'm doing. Here's what they they are doing. And there's a disconnect. They might not be doing as much as I am. So I feel slighted. I feel like they're lazy, like they don't care. So that definitely does play a role here. In this, it could be even regards to other people. Maybe as a manager, you've four out of five people who are operating at a very similar level. And then you've got one person who's not. So what perceptions also come into play and perhaps what unfair comparison comes into play as well. These can help us understand fundamentally what feeds into my belief that somebody is lazy, which again is important because it helps us understand the specific elements of it, if you will, the components that actually feed into this generalized statement of laziness. Because once we understand that, then it's much easier to, again, actually start chipping away at it. One other question I'll throw out there is how do you know they're lazy? Unless you're literally with them 24-7, day in and day out, and see what they're doing all the time, how do we know that they are truly lazy? If I am legitimately with somebody all the time and all they do is lounge around and watch TV and they never do what they need to get done or they're always missing deadlines, you could say, hey, this person is lazy. They just don't do anything because I literally see it. But in the business world, especially today, where we are pretty much 100% remote still, there can be that perception of I don't see that person I don't know what they're doing, therefore they're lazy. Unless we actually witness what they are doing, we do we truly know that laziness is the issue? Because in the workplace, it could very well be someone who's actually disengaged instead. It may not be laziness. It may be that they are disenchanted. They're disengaged. They don't see the value in putting a lot of effort because They're being treated unfairly. There's a lot more that can actually be at the core of what we see than somebody being truly lazy. I share that thought because it's also a great question to ask because we can make this presumption that somebody is lazy or they just don't want to put the effort in, but there could be something that is legitimately feeding into it. I'm not saying this is the case that exists all the time in the workplace. But if you have a manager that yells at somebody, that belittles them, that is berating them all the time, why would somebody continue to put effort forth for someone who treats them absolutely horrifically? That person 
They're not lazy, they're disengaged. So what are the contributing factors that come into play? In addition to these questions we've asked, are there cultural differences that play a role? What I mean by that is the culture of the team, the culture of the organization. If it is, say, absolutely cutthroat, live or die, and no one helps anybody out, if you're somebody who does not jive with that, you're going to get disengaged. That's the root cause versus somebody being truly lazy because they just don't want to put work or effort in. I know it's semantics. I know it's a fine line, but it's an important fine line to understand. Once we've gone through all of this and we've unearthed what's truly at the heart of what we are seeing from others and understanding the specific things that give us that impression that they are lazy, then we're able to actually put forth a plan of action to help shift that. If it is somebody who is, let's say, truly lazy, meaning in this case that they don't want to put effort forth or they're just not going to put as much effort forth perhaps as somebody else or the rest of the team because of the, that perception with those four people saying at this level and this one person at this level, part of the question can be, are they failing at their job? Are they not meeting what is expected of them? Because there can be that disparity where four people are operating, say, at an outstanding level. And this one person perhaps is operating at a satisfactory level. If they're meeting what they're intended to meet, but you've got high performers, that difference can cause us to believe perhaps that they're not putting more effort into it. But if they're actually legitimately meeting what they're being asked to do, then it's not a question of laziness. It's a question of perception and differentiators of personalities on the team. That's a very introspective question for us to ask ourselves as managers. Is somebody actually meeting what is expected of them? We often forget that we do have ratings in organizations for a very specific reason. And there's a reason why there is that same middle level. You've got your sub-performance ratings, you've got your meets expectations or your satisfactory rating, and then you've got your above ratings. Not everybody has to be at those aboves. So am I perceiving somebody to be lazy because I'm comparing them to other people on the team? If that's the case, what does their actual output and work product lead me to believe? Because if they are at that meets expectation level, then they're actually not lazy. Now, if we objectively look at it and they are below it, then that does trigger additional actions we would take as managers. Typically, there is the conversations we have with them. There's the documentation. There's the coaching that goes with it in terms of clearly identifying areas that we would like to help them improve in, steps that they can take to do it, the help that we provide, the help maybe a mentor or a senior provides. Those types of things typically come out. I would add into this beyond the typical stuff that we do is what we talked about last time, having an actual conversation with them to understand what goes into it, what causes this perception of laziness. Because when we truly understand from them, then it's much more easy to put together a unique plan of action that's going to be right for them to help level up. That's on, let's just say, helping a person level up. If we perhaps find that it's a disengagement or a lack of motivation, it's a very similar tact to what we've just talked about. And we leverage a lot of what we talked about last time. But if it's disengagement, that goes a lot further than just, say, the motivation piece. So what I'll say is the last episode of how do I get others to be as motivated as I am can help us more specifically address the laziness case that's caused by, say, pure motivation. So I'll refer to you, excuse me, I'll refer you to that episode. Because we've covered that, I want to get into the disengagement piece. That disengagement piece is huge. It's estimated that about 34% of an annual salary is lost for companies due to disengaged employees. So if someone's making $100,000 just for easy math, you're losing $34,000 a year as an organization. That's the cost of disengagement. 
And that disengagement can come from a lot of different places. So again, from understanding the culture of the team, the individual, the disconnect or the connection there can help us unearth the disengagement. Having conversations with them as well can help us understand what goes into that disengagement. Are you forcing them to do something that they just truly do not enjoy? Are they forced to work with somebody that they really do not get along with? Have they been treated unfairly? Have they continually been passed up for promotions? There's a lot of different things that can go into disengagement. Have they put forth a lot of effort in the past and found that they've always ran into roadblocks and hurdles and no matter what they've done or tried over an extended period of time, they just cannot make any headway. That's going to disengage people. And that can give us the perception that they're lazy, that they don't care because they've stopped trying. But it's not laziness that's actually there. It's the disengagement piece that drives it. And rectifying that is the path to overcome this laziness. So it's really not a simple one and done type of question. Because a lot of times, as I said earlier on today, we may characterize something as being lazy or someone as being lazy, but it's not pure laziness that's actually at the heart of it. We have to understand and open it up much more fruitfully to see what really is at the heart. What are the perceptions? What are the specific elements and characteristics that feed into the perception of laziness? What is it that the other person truly feels and has gone through and leads to what we see from them. That can make it much more easy to pinpoint what we can help them with to increase their productivity, increase their motivation, to increase their effort, to see them overcome what we characterize and call laziness that may actually not even be that at all. So very similar to our last episode in terms of motivating people, one of the very first steps is understanding what gives us this impression? What do we see from people? What really do we mean by lazy? What role do we play in our own, say, standards, production level or efficiency versus theirs? What additional perception comes into play when we look at them versus other people that may feed into this perception of laziness? And what do we see by actually interacting with them? Or are we making assumptions? because we're not around them. All these things can help us understand what feeds into this. Then once we understand that and have conversations with them, then we can move forward and help them overcome this. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And until the next time, be the movement in your life.